first two together, group the second two. What's the GCF in the first group? Do two and five have anything in common? X squared. No, but they have X's in common. So you write down your GCF of X squared, and then remember you're dividing that out of each thing. And so the leftovers go in here. What is it? 2X plus 5. And what's happening in that second group that we have to be careful about? There's negatives. So whenever there's a negative right here, when you do your GCF, you make it negative, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. And what do 6 and 5 have in common? Three. A 3. Y. And they have a Y. Yeah. That's right. So you're going to divide that negative 3Y out of each thing. 2X plus 5. So then you get here, now you look to see what they have in common together. 2x plus 5. Because mm -hmm. basically you're dividing out that GCF of 2x plus 5 again. So those are gone. That leaves you with x squared here. And then negative 3y here. Mm-hmm, yeah. So try number two, if you haven't already finished that one out, okay? All right, Mario, tell me how to do number two. You tell me, I'm going to write it. I'm in, you narrate, I, I'm going to scribe. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one? Because that's their... They didn't have anything in common, right? So you could say their GCF is just one, right? And then what? So what's their GCF now? Mario. X minus 10. Okay, go guess. Go guess. Oh, uh, yeah. And then after that, uh, you got 3x plus 1. And then that transforms into 3x squared. What's it? Okay. I did it. I did it. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't. Hmm? What? I think there's still water. I wouldn't. It's flu season. I don't even know how long it's been there. Uh, um, all right. So today's lesson. It is another form of factoring, but we'll be starting with problems that have, how many terms do you see here? Three. How many were in our warm-up? Four. Four. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you how to rewrite these trinomials into four terms, so then we can do the grouping from yesterday, all right? So our goal is to take this format and get it something like this into two factors. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the cross thing. But I want to show you where it even comes from real fast to help you remember why we're doing it. So in this example up here, I have two binomials, right? 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Multiplying, remember we talked the other day, is the opposite process of factoring. And that's our whole unit is factoring. So if I foiled these two binomials, I'd have 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared. Then I'd have 3x times 1. Yep, foil. 2 times 2x is 4x. And 2 times 1 is 2. Right. Um, how many terms do you see there? Four. What's the next step? Oh, you, you do what we did like just now, like you do like the. Oh, I'm not factoring just yet. I'm going the. Up, I'm doing opposite method. You combine the like terms, right? Seven x. So our, what we're doing today, so you know how to FOIL, right? That gets you this to here. FOIL goes 
there to here. What we're doing today is going from here to there, and then to there, okay? So it's foil backwards. And I'm gonna call it the AC method, right? It starts with the cross, you've seen that before, right? So this first example starts us here, and I'm gonna show you how to get from a trinomial up through this work and then over to this as your final answer using grouping like we did yesterday. The only new thing today is, well, how do you get from here to this middle step? And that's where we do the cross thing. So here's how that's gonna look. Um, the very first step is to factor out any GCF. You always, always wanna do this first on any factor problem. So look at there, look at this example and tell me um, what GCFs you see anywhere for the whole thing. They don't, right? Just one. So the first step doesn't apply. So step one, not applicable. But you need to be in the practice of checking for it, so that's why I made you check for it, even though I knew there wasn't one. Um, step two, you want to find two numbers that multiply to AC and add to B. But you might need a quick, quick reminder, where am I getting the AC and the B from? Like, what do those even mean? This is your general standard form for a trinomial. The A value comes from the coefficient for x squared, B is the coefficient of the middle term, and C is the constant out on the very end. So when I say we need something in this problem that multiplies to AC, so we set up our cross, we want to put whatever multiplies by AC, we want that number up here and adds to B, right? In this problem, here's my A, my B, my C. Which two numbers am I multiplying for AC? Six times two. You don't need, you need no, no, right now we're just looking at the numbers only. So this is your AC, and then what adds to B, the B is seven. And what two numbers multiply to that? Four and three go here. Oh, gotcha. So it multiplies to AC and adds to B, because that's what happens when you FOIL, okay? These numbers multiply to 12 and add to 7, because that comes from the FOILing step, okay? So what you do then, so that's step two, right there. Step three says to split the middle term using those two numbers, just your middle term. Your first term stays the same, so CX, C, I'm making up stuff. Mm -hmm. We're rewriting 7x now using these two numbers we got over here, 4x plus 3x. And it does not matter which one you write first. You will get the same answer. So don't stress about which one you write down. And then the 2. The 2 goes on the end. And now you do the whole grouping thing. So step four, factor by grouping. You group the first two together, the second two together. What is the GCF in the first group? 2x. So we write down our GCF, divide each of those by 2x. That leaves me 3x plus 2. The next one is just one. The three and two don't have anything in common. There's no X's in common. So if they don't have anything special, you say, oh, they just have one. Exactly. So their GCF is one. And when you divide that out, it doesn't change anything. So dividing out 3x plus 2 in that next step, cancel, 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 leaves you with 2x plus 1. Did you notice that that was the example problem backwards? Did you see that? Okay. That's what we foiled at the beginning and got the 6x. So it's foil backwards. 
Um, we're not doing every single problem on the notes. It gets a little bit repetitive, so I'm cutting some out, but I'll tell you those answers in case you want the practice. Right now, what I want you to do is number one, for sure. We're doing number one, for sure. All right, when you set up your cross, the top is A times C and the bottom is B. So I saw your papers. You had 12 on top, 13 on bottom. What multiplies to 12 and adds to 13? 12 and 1. 12 and 1. So which part of this am I rewriting? The, uh, the middle term. The other two terms just come on down just like they are, okay? They don't have to change for nobody. So 6x squared plus 12x plus 1x plus 2. Now you have four terms, so you start your grouping. Group, 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 group. GCF of the first one, 6x. Remember, you want the very biggest GCF. That, that's what G, the G stands for, the greatest one. Right? So divide that out of each thing. Math, math, math. Right, right, right and you get x plus 2 plus 1, right? And the next group, they didn't have anything in common, so we'll say they only have a 1. That doesn't change anything. And now what do they have in common, those groups? x plus 2. So we write that down. We divide it out of each of these. So it's gone there, gone there. And we left 6x plus gone girl. Okay. Um, any questions about that? Does it matter which word you write? Mm -mm. No, you'll get the same answer. Now, if you write. Yeah, that's okay. Let's say that when you wrote down your 12x and your 1x, you wrote them in this order. 1 plus 2, bless you, you get the same answer, God bless you, you get the same answer, but these will be mixed when you're done, they'll just be in a different order. Um, number two, we're going to skip because it's pretty repetitive, and I think you get the hang of things, so let me just tell you the answer to that one, in case you already did it or you want to do it, the answer to number two is 2y plus 1 times 2y plus 3. Um, I do want you to try number 3 because it has a negative. And just to be sure, we're all on board with the negatives. And then on the back, we only have one more problem we're, we're going to do together. And then I'll give you your worksheet. You have to include the negative that's in front of the 6. So your two numbers are what multiplies to negative 24 and adds to positive 5. And what two numbers did you come up with? Negative 3 and 8. Right. So if anybody needs to fix that, I'll give you three seconds, and then I'll work the problem. So now it's just grouping. If you wrote 3m before the 8m, your math is going to look like mine. If you wrote 8m first and then the negative 3m, your math will look different for a few moments. But then at the end, it'll all be the same, OK? So the way I did it gives me m times 4m minus 3 plus 2 times 4m minus 3 which gives me 4m minus 3 times m plus 2. Raise your hand if you got that. Raise your hand if you got that, even if you wrote 8m before the negative 3m. Well, okay. Right? So, if I want to do that, it mm -hmm. should be m minus 3. Because if I would have uh, factor out the negative 3, I would have had the negative No, you'll still have the same sign. Okay. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Figure it out? Yeah. Okay. On the back, does anybody need this up anymore? Okay. Yes? Okay. 
on the back, we're skipping the three problems on top. They're really easy. I was trying to show you that if there's no A value, it's faster, but it'll just get very repetitive, and I don't want to bore you. So I'm going to give you those answers in case you did them or in case you want to do them. The only one on the back, though, I want us to actually talk about together is number seven because it's got an additional step. Crystal, are you good? Okay. So let me give you the answers for the few on the back. They're this, x plus 4, x minus 3, x plus 5, x plus 6, and x minus 8, x minus 7. But the reason why I want that I'm more concerned about number 7 is it has an additional step. You see that hint right there? Factor out the GCF first. That should be your first step every time to always look for a GCF. And this one has one. What's the, what's the GCF here? Five. Five goes into all the numbers. There's no Y's in common because that last term doesn't have a, a Y. So here's how you begin. You write the five down as your GCF. You divide it out of each of your terms, leaving you 2Y squared minus 11y, and then 5 goes into 7 once with a remainder of 2, so that's 14. Now that 5 is just going to hang out there for a bit, okay? You're not going to do anything. You're going to forget about it for a little while and bring it back into your final answer later. What you need to do now is the AC method on this stuff. Okay, so you kind of have like a new problem the 2y squared minus 11y plus 14. You're going to do today's method on just that highlighted stuff. So take a moment to try that. Anxiety. Remember that our goal is to factor. Your answer is stuff that's being multiplied together. When you pull that 5 out, it's going to be one of the factors in your final answer. You are not ever multiplying it back through. Because if you did, you would undo your work. So it's just going to stay out there. And you're only going to think about that highlighted stuff. We'll talk about the 5 again in our final answer. So when you're just doing the highlighted stuff and you're resisting the 5, right, it's just going to hang out, hanging out, hanging out. So when we do the AC method on the yellow stuff, what multiplies to 28 and adds to negative 11, y'all said negative 4, negative 7. So then you rewrite that as 2y squared. Do you want the negative 4 or the negative 7 first? Negative 4? Does it matter? Nope. You'll get the same answer. So you do your grouping. GCF of the first group is 2y. That leaves me y minus 2 in that group right, when you divide it out. The second group is a negative 7. And when I divide that out of the first term, so let me just show you that again because it's a negative. It's positive y, and out of the second term is negative 2. So now they have y minus 2 in common. And after you take that out, you're left with 2y up here and minus 7 here. Be sure at this step you have parentheses around both groups. Okay. And now you have to remember about the 5 from the beginning problem. Okay. If you were to FOIL this back out and then multiply all that by the 5, you'd get your what you started with. And that's it for today. Let me give you a wish. <laughs>